we're going to be building an accordion block today. And just to kind of set the stage of kind of what we'll cover versus what we won't cover, just to set some expectations. Um, I'm going to scaffold out some blocks with the WordPress create block package. Um, we'll, I'll step through hooking up because there's actually going to be two blocks today. The accordion block will be a parent and kind of child relationship. So there'll be a accordion block with an accordion item, which you'll add to the accordion. So we'll, we'll hook up two blocks and um, I won't be going through like any node or NPM setup. Um, I'm hoping either you're familiar with that already, or if not, then feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. And I'm always happy to help get uh, that kind of development um, system set up for you. Um, I'll also kind of, I'll, I'll point to some accessibility considerations while I'm building this out, but I won't go too in depth. Um, when it comes to accordions, there definitely is a good deal of considerations when it comes to accessibility. Um, but I'll, I'll be sharing a link on kind of the, the recommendations there and we'll kind of, um, shadow a lot of the markup that, uh, is accessible. So, and I'll also be sharing at the end, the, uh, GitHub repo with the final block which I actually haven't, the, the code isn't there yet, but um, I'll share the link because the, the repo is established, just the code isn't there yet. Okay. So to set the stage here, um, I have a WordPress site set up on local. Uh, yeah, accordion block site here. Um, I have a basic WordPress install, nothing really fancy going on. Um, I'm using the 2023 theme for this demo. Um, there's no plugins, although we will be our block will be using a plugin, so we'll we'll be creating a plugin essentially. Uh, nothing, no posts. Uh, I think a couple of default pages here. Um, so that is that. We're starting from scratch. Um, so hopefully I'm going to jump actually, I'll jump from, let's see, to show one way to get started with creating a block, uh, especially when you're using local is you can get to the root of your WordPress install, uh, by going to the site open site shell here. And as you see over here, when I did that, uh, dropped me right into the root of the local site. Um, so we can see here the directories, uh, there's WP content here, which we're actually gonna go into WP content. And we'll go into the plugins. And now that we're in the plugins directory, we're gonna, this is where we'll use the create block uh, package. So let me actually pull that up that I had it. Yeah, there it is. So this, uh, the create block package helps expedite kind of generating a block and it offers a bunch of different ways of doing it. There's a dynamic variant. Uh, the default is um, uh, using, it spits out basically a static block. Um, so that's actually where we're gonna start today. And it actually kind of gives you the commands that you can get going here. And by default, it also creates a plugin for us. So that's, gets us most of the way there. So we'll run uh, npx create block. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to call it accordion. That's all we need for this. And we can step through. It'll prompt us for some other steps here along the way. So first thing it's doing is pulling down the create block package to start uh, generating the blocks and plugins. So that's takes a second here. 
And while that's running, we can kind of look at some of the things uh, that Create Block can do. So there's even the option to, there's some templates that are involved that you could, and you can create custom templates. Um, I experimented with creating an advanced custom fields uh, template. So that would generate a block with um, a lot of the hookup that ACF requires for ACF blocks. Uh, again, here's the, the dynamic variant. Um, and then also, it, once you generate a plugin with blocks contained in it, if you need to create, go back and create another uh, block, you can run a uh, no plugin flag, and that'll just generate a, a single block for you. Hopefully, that's, this is uh, readable. Sorry, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So, hopefully, that's a little bit easier to read. All right. So, if we hop back over here, um, create block has done its thing and it tells us some of the commands we might want to get started with. So right here, actually, we're going to CD into our new plugin. Uh, so now we are in the accordion plugin and I'm actually going to open this up in uh, VS code now at this point. Now we're directly right in the accordion plugin. Um, and we're going to want to run for development mode. We're just going to run npm start. And this just leverages the WP scripts uh, package to, which is basically Webpack under the hood. So it's kind of watching some of uh, the block files for changes and generating uh, new build files based on any changes that 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 needs to output. And I can actually step into, if you look in the package.json, which this is created by create block package. Um, these are the scripts that, you know, a majority of WP scripts of what we're using, like npm run start, which I just ran is running WP script start under the hood. So, so if we go here, this is where our actual individual block was generated in the source directory. And if you look at the block.json, this is this kind of a schema for blocks in WordPress. Um, and it created a create block accordion uh, block for us. But we're going to do a little reorganization here because we're going to have two blocks. And if we open up the accordion.php here, this is the, the heart of the plugin basically. So we can actually hop over and see our plugin is available now. There's not much to it, but it's there and we can activate it. I'm gonna hold off on activating for now, but um, it, so create block registered and created a block for us and it's referencing it in the build directory, which is good. Um, but we want to do two blocks. So I'm actually going to create a new folder, all this accordion in the source directory. And I'm going to take all this stuff and that was originally in the source directory and move that into accordion. And then I'm going to create a, actually, no, I'm sorry, step back. I'll use the create block package to create the accordion item block which will be nested within the accordion block. Um, so we'll do that real quick. We'll hop back over here and we can, uh, so we're still in the accordion directory. We can do NPX. Uh, actually, we wanna go into the source directory. So source and then We can run npx WordPress create block, and we're going to call this accordion item. And we want the no plugin flag because we just want to create a single block. And voila, accordion item has been generated. So we can go back up a directory and then run npm start to have that going in the background. And I'll switch back over to VS Code here and increase the size there a little bit, queued up over here. So um, this is actually 
think this part is pu pushed up to GitHub at the moment, but uh, we're just going to extend this code in the plugin originally and bring this over into our plugin so that we have both um, blocks registered. So now it's pointing to the build, which is where our blocks are built when NPM is run uh, to, the, to the build directory. So if we, with that basic functionality in mind, we should be able to activate the plugin and see both of our blocks at this point. I'll just hop into this page and we can do, Yep, accordion and accordion item are showing up here. So that's good. Of course, there's not much there and nothing hooked up. So good start. Um, so now we can get into kind of organizing things. So accordion block is going to be a parent block. Um, so we're going to, I think it's the parent entry. Yep. Uh, and then we can reference, and I'm actually going to change the names on these to just a different namespace, WPE Accordion, and I'll open up the Accordion item as well, and we'll do that over here, WPE Accordion item. Uh, so we're going to say the, this is, the, or actually we want the parent over here, sorry, in the Accordion item. So here, I'll take this out. And we can say, pass the WPE accordion block. Huh. There we go. So that's saying that our accordion item block can only be used in the parent of this uh, accordion block, which is good. Um, I think that's actually all we'll need for, I mean, you can put a custom description here. Uh, we don't really, you know, I think that's all that we'll need in the block.json for both of these items. Um, so if we open up the accordion index, this is the entry point for the accordion block. And this is kind of the heart of where we have our block registered. Uh, we have an edit and save. And this is where, yeah, we're passing in the metadata name. This is being referenced from the block.json that we were just in for the accordion over here. Um, so that's good. And then we can hop into our edit and start hooking up some of the uh, markup for the accordion itself. So um, probably gonna remove, let's see if we can move some of that. Just get some organization here. Um, we'll leave the style sheet here. But as you can see, this is what we are seeing in the editor. Um, and this is kind of the, when we're in edit mode, this is where we can hook up our markup. Um, There's a question from Nick that might be helpful before we move on, if that's okay, Damon, or yeah. is this not a good stopping point? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, okay, cool. He said, can we talk for a second about the difference between dynamic and static blocks, which might be helpful before we keep moving into the creation? Yes. Um, so static block, uh, dynamic blocks are, well, that's a tricky one. <laughs> there's a, typically, um, there's a couple of ways to register a block. And the approach I'm taking right now is a static block. Um, but you can also register it with PHP, which is pointing to the dynamic block. So, um, and the kind of the pros and cons, um, I mean, the biggest kind of pro and con, the biggest is whether you're more comfortable working with JavaScript and 
um, some of the block packages that you would need for uh, blocks, although you still have to kind of be familiar with some of that. Um, so if you were to go with the dynamic block route, you would be you know, really relying on uh, PHP to do a lot of the work, which um, some people are more comfortable with. Um, whereas a static block, you would be relying more on uh, kind of Gutenberg's, uh, Gutenberg's abstraction of React APIs and a lot of the packages that Gutenberg relies on. Um, Nick, you, do you have anything to add to that, actually? You, I, I don't know if you have. Yeah, sorry to derail you real quick there with that with that open ended question. Uh, no Sebastian, Sebastian was talking about that render file um, that you can now place in theme.json. Um, so if you're creating a dynamic block that you're rendering the content on the front end in PHP, you would use that render file. Um, but with a static block, which you're showing in a second, you're saving the content using the save uh, function inside of the editor. Right. So, um, so it, it, you only care about the render file if you're creating a dynamic block. Uh, if you're creating a static block, um, you don't need to worry about that and you use the save function. Um, I'll follow up on a second question in the chat, but I just wanted to call that out in case people were interested in the new render function or render file ability to define a render file, um, which we're not, which you won't be probably using here. So, yeah, no, I am not. Yeah. I'm not doing a dynamic block and using the render. Um, I should have put that in the, at the beginning, sorry. But good clarification. All right, so was there any other questions, Sam? Or I don't think I saw any other questions. So if you could just pull us back in and recap where you're at, that'd be super helpful. Yeah, um, so we have an accordion block, an accordion item block, scaffolded. And right now I am in the accordion block um, and I'm gonna start hooking up the edit markup and functionality. So when you're in the editor, basically you can modify the accordion block. Uh, so yeah. So if we hop, so accordion, we can show that this is what we're seeing in the editor here. Um, and we're going to need to pass down some uh, of the properties. But so this is actually, you know, some of the, the boilerplate code that I have. But um, I think we, yeah, this was already passing down. This package is already pulled in for us. Uh, we need an additional. Uh, use inner block. So since we're nesting our blocks within each other, we're doing an accordion item within an accordion block. Um, we're going to need inner block props to be passed down into uh, down to the accordion item. So we'll pull that in additionally here from the block editor uh, package. And we're going to pass the accordion item down as a, as a template a reference. So we can get that set up. Um, again, this is pointing to the reference basically that we did in the accordion item block.json. So here we are, we're calling the name accordion item. And we're going to pass that down as a template. And then we're going to actually, this is our final markup for the accordion, um, <clears throat> which passes through the inner block props. Um, and we're passing the template down with as the allowed blocks, which is a <clears throat> property that allows us to say which blocks can be utilized within the accordion itself. So you can kind of uh, refine what blocks you want allowed, uh, and then we're passing a template which will kind of populate uh, what our, accord our accordion item within, and then the template lock of false will, um, actually I think, 
the Temple Rock Falls will allow, will not allow the movement of the accordion item within the accordion block. Sorry, <laughs> the could be, I, I could, I guess we could call it a different name, accordion and accordion item are kind of uh, confusing at times, but um, so we'll bring this over into our edit and we're actually gonna replace, yeah, we can get rid of uh, this. And that should change things up over here. Let's see how we're doing over here. We're gonna remove this and add in our accordion block and see where we're at. So this is pulling in the accordion item, which we wanted. It's referencing the accordion item, but this is actually the accordion block. So that's good. So now we can hook up the edit um, functionality for the accordion item itself. Is the smiley face? Yes, uh, the smiley face is just something that was in. So you can actually set an icon here. And these are referencing uh, dash icons from WordPress. So you can replace this with something else. Um, I think menu, I, I can't even remember some of the names, but um, so that'll affect that icon here that shows up in the editor. There was another question from Lisa, a more substantive question than the smiley face uh, <laughs> that says, is the accordion item preloaded, quote unquote, into the accordion block? Yes, it is. Yep. Good question. Yeah. Uh, this was populated within the accordion item. Uh, but there's not much there right now. So we'll dive into that. So let me close out some of this stuff. So now we're just working on the accordion item. Um, Actually, that's the wrong one. There we go. Close that out. Here we go. For the accordion item, um, it's kind of a lot of the similar setup. Um, we need inner block props and block props. And we're going to use a rich text um, component from the block editor package. And that will actually be used to. Um, create the editable area within the editor for the accordion toggle itself, the rich text. Uh, so we can bring the setup over, our dependencies over, put this in accordion item. Actually, you just get rid of all this. Uh, we can leave, this is pulling in the editor styles. We'll leave that there for now. And then again, this is what we are seeing in the editor from accordion hello from accordion item. Uh, that's where we'll start putting in our, our markup for our accordion item. Again, we're going to pull in a, a, the same idea. We're going to pre-populate with a, just a paragraph to give it kind of um, expedite the editorial flow here. So we'll bring that over. And then this is the heart of where accordion item plays out. And I'll just bring this over for now and then I'll step through it actually. We can replace all this stuff down at the bottom. Okay. So we have our template declared, which is just a paragraph block. And we're just saying, you know, pass some placeholder text to, to uh, for the editor. Um, and then we reference the template here and the template lock again, so that the paragraph um, cannot be removed from within the accordion item. And then this is kind of uh, the heart of the markup here. We're passing down the inner block properties. 
Um, and then for our accordion trigger, we have an H3 with a button nested inside. And then uh, here is where we use the rich text component um, to make an editable region for the toggle. Uh, and then we're passing in some properties here. We're saying, you know, use a span element for rich text, um, a class, uh, aria label. And then here on the on change, we this is where you can pass, uh, you allow for essentially the the text to be changed. If without this, you know, the the interactivity, the state would not be there. Um, and then we have an icon, and this is where the accordion content will live. So this is the toggle above, and then the content that is toggled open and closed below. You know what, Damon? Uh, this might be a good uh, time to interrupt you for a second just to ask yeah. these questions that have come in. Um, first question that's relevant to where you are right now, I think. Uh, Lisa said, are both the accordion item and accordion containers for other blocks? Um, the accordion, I mean, I think you're asking, can you use them nested in other blocks? Like if I wanted to have an accordion within a group or. No. No. Okay. No, I just wanted to make sure I was understanding that the accordion is the overall container. Yeah. And then you've got an accordion item, which happens to be another container that's inside the larger accordion that can contain things like a paragraph block, or I don't know if a list block could also be permitted. So I'm saying it's like a container in a container to hold other blocks. Yeah. Does that absolutely. make sense? But yep. no other blocks in the accordion container besides the accordion item. Correct. hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Just checking. Yep. Thanks for that clarification, Lisa. Yeah. Um, and then Jeremy asked a question, and I think this was more applicable to the, the UI side or the editor side. Um, if the accordion item block is marked with a parent, does it then not display in the page block chooser? Uh, it would not um, unless you were, you know, uh, unless you had the accordion selected. But yes, correct. You can't um, just search for an accordion item. And actually, I can show that in one second. Let's see. Save this and let's back up here and remove this and see where we're at. Remove, save, and we'll just hop back in. It's easier. So I come over here and I'll actually expand over here and search for, I can search for accordion, but you can see that accordion item does not come up. But once I add accordion, we have some, um, then we can, well, actually the accordion item is already nested within. So, so you can see the, the hierarchy over here on the left, we have accordion, accordion item, and then we have our template we populated with just a paragraph block. But would to go back to Lisa's question, yes, you can add, so we can add a paragraph here. Uh, we can add some more, let's see, insert after we could have a list. Um, so within the accordion item, yes, you can have essentially any block that you wanted. And you could go back if you wanted to refine this block and say, maybe you only want your editors to use paragraph and list. Uh, then you could pass an allow list um, in the accordion item itself. But for now, I'm just leaving it wide open. <laughs> um, so we have the edit. Um, functionality hooked up for these blocks, but now we also have to have the save functionality. So I'm going to save this. Um, this is the accordion item. We close that. And really the save uh, functionality is pretty similar to the edit. And in our case, not always with all blocks, but um, this is what is rendered after uh, anything has been saved in the editor. 
um, but also on the front end. So um, let me just open this up. So this is for our accordion block, the parent accordion. Um, and this is the save functionality. And again, it's pulling in inner blocks and use block props. Uh, and we're passing that down into the inner blocks uh, component and just outputting the content that's saved. So we can actually, this was all the boilerplate that create block output for us. Uh, we don't really need any of that. Um, yeah, the accordion, the parent block is pretty simple. There's not much to it. It's really just kind of a container uh, block for the accordion item. So that's that. And then <clears throat> to hop back over into the accordion item. Um, and again, if we look at the accordion items edit, you know, there's definitely a lot more going on. So we have to actually still output the rich text uh, component and the accordion toggle and the accordion content and the save uh, functionality. So, and I'll just bring this over and then I'll step through it again to keep things going along. Um, so we're pulling in uh, these packages, the use block props, use inner block props. Um, and rich text. Um, uh, this is just for localization, which is uh, good to do. Um, and then we pass a lot of our uh, properties down to the save functionality. Um, we're taking the accordion title um, so we can check whether um, we have any a string available. Um, Otherwise, we don't want to the editor to uh, could bail or break if you know if they saved with an empty string. Um, we don't really want that, so you know there's a check here for whether we have an a, accordion title string. Um, if not, then just output uh, some simple text. But really, this markup uh, just mirrors what the edit um, function was doing. So with that saved, we can actually hop over here and I'm actually gonna remove this because we wanna start and see where we are again, back out. So we can say accordion and an accordion block. Um, here's the toggle title. We can alter that. Uh, Did I, let's see, oh, did I forget the, sorry, I don't know why I uh, removed the button there, it should stay. Oh, huh. I think I forgot to, accordion trigger. Let me make sure there's no errors in the console. Nope. I don't know what's going on there. Accordion trigger print. Toggle title. Oh. Uh, Yeah, that's odd. Maybe it's, let's try it again, back out. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's see if we add content. 
Uh, you can edit it, but it's something with the backspace, I think, is removing the entire plot, which we don't want. So there's probably, it might not be, um, this might be actually for the toggle itself, it might be recommended to might we might not want to leverage the rich text field in this case because um there's it comes with some extra things that we might not necessarily need because we really just need a an editable but editable button component here whereas this is um giving us some additional like mark uh you know bold and italic and um, we probably wouldn't want that. And plus the, the backspace is removing it, but um, I'll leave that there for now. But we can save this. Uh, let's see what we're getting on the front end. Yep, the styling is all, well, this, there is no styling. <laughs> and we should be able to have the exact same mark. Trying to move some Zoom things around. Hey, Damon, while you're in there, uh, Lisa was asking if the button markup is related to the button or buttons block, or if it's you know something else. Um, no, the, the fact that it's, um, yeah, like the backspace was removing it. Um, I, I'm actually not using, well, I am using a button. Well, and you can see here, there is a button output. But in the editor, the rich text component, I think they're, this is, I'm trying to remember what, I think there's some extra like state or something going on. So when I backspace and there's no characters left, it removes the whole button. Um, but if we rolled kind of our own button component, then we probably wouldn't get that affordance, um, but we'd also have to, do a, a little bit more work as well, but that, that's probably actually what I'm going to be end up doing in the the full uh, block code. Um, I'll have to roll a custom button. Does that answer your question, Lisa? Did that, did that make sense? I, I think you clarified that it, it, the fact that you're using the button as markup is not the same as button as I would see it as like in the inserter, for example. It's completely independent. It just happens to be using button. Yeah, so, so um, yep, so here, so I think the problem here is, so if you see, and this is the accordion item, I have an H3 with a nested button element, and then this here, rich text, is a custom component that we're using from a WordPress package, and this is kind of causing the issue here. We would probably have to get rid of this and roll in some other, uh, you know, probably go with like a span here for proper markup. And then we'd have to do some um, on change functionality to watch for in the editor, um, which I'll, you know, I'll probably end up doing at the end of the day because this isn't really working the rich text. But for now, I'm going to charge ahead just so you can get a kind of a rough prototype of the accordion. Um, so here is the saved output. It should match what we're seeing in the editor. We have the wrapping accordion and then the accordion item, which has a button and the toggle within, and then the accordion content is nested. And then if we hop back over to And inspect here. Here is the accordion, H3 button span. So yeah, so here is the, the content editable true. That's the, the part that's uh, given me an issue right now. So um, I'd probably have to take out the rich text and roll something different there. Uh, the icon button, and then the content is down below. Um, another thing from here we would probably want to do is, let me back up out of here. 
Um, when we add an accordion, or an accordion item, I'm sorry, let's get rid of this. We should be able to add another accordion item, which um, we would probably have to do a custom, um, it's called, in, I think, a pender. And that would allow us to continue to add more accordion items nested within the accordion, because right now uh, we can, but you have to duplicate. Um, and that actually, it might have something to do with the template lock. I haven't, but we can see toggle to, and we could put some different. So now we have two items here nested. Make sure our markup. Yep. So there's accordion and then accordion items. Um, I can stop there for, are there any other questions right now, Sam? All right, before I, I'll probably dive into some of the basic broad strokes of styling some of this up. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see any other questions right now. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's give this, let's get this kind of looking, I guess, like an accordion. Uh, in order to do that, the create block package gives us for each of these blocks, we have the editor.scss and the style.scss. Um, the editor, as you can see when it outputs it, this only affects anything in the editor and then the style affects the front end uh, appearance. Um, so I actually have some basic styles over here that I can pull in. See if I, yeah. Um, most of this I put, I mean, you could go about this a few different ways of organizing it and you could get pretty in depth with as far as performance and serving what styles for, because for each block, because this is kind of confusing because we're we have the parent and nested accordion item. For now, I'm just going to put everything in the parent accordion uh, styles.scss. So this will affect the front end output. And actually, no, I'm sorry, I have to. The style that scss is output in the front end and in the editor, whereas the editor.scss is just output in the editor. Um, so if we just drop that in there, and let's revisit. You should start to see. Uh, this is the good old something got, let's see, something got changed. Uh, it was probably just the addition of our, our CSS that might have modified the, the output there. But now we can see we have some basic styling. Um, and since this is 2023, I'm pulling in the primary colors. Uh, I Here you can see I just tried to provide some simple variables so that perhaps a theme author could override and set their own if they wanted to or override any of these colors. Um, but other than that, it's I won't step through all this CSS, but um, it's pretty simple. And so that saves it in the back end, that shows it in the back end. And if we save and hop over here, you can see the same output in the front end. Yeah. And then the last step <clears throat> is hooking up the JavaScript to toggle <clears throat> each item closed and open. Uh, we'll want that to be, I, for this particular block, I probably wouldn't actually recommend outputting it in the editor um, because as far as the editorial experience, I probably want to allow editors just to be able to 
uh, edit all these and not get confused on what's open and what's closed, especially with an accordion. If it was using like <clears throat> the details element and doing kind of a, a simple toggle open, toggle close, um, then you might, you probably could now actually in that case too, I probably would leave it alone. I would just serve it like this. Um, so then really we'll just want to output the top, the JavaScript to toggle open and close on the front end only. So we can hop back over. We have our styling in place and that's just all on the, in within the accordion. Uh, so we actually will create, let's see, two files here. We'll say accordion JS. This will be all our functionality of toggling and closing. And then we'll create uh, Merkin call it script.js. And this is, we'll pull in the accordion uh, class and then just kind of initiate the accordion in the script.js. So it's probably easier to see if I get some code in there. Let's see. So this is kind of where the script.js will reference, will pull in from the accordion that I just created, accordion.js class, and then we'll pass in uh, our targeted class for each accordion block, which is, we can verify over here, please inspect. Yeah, there it is. WP block WP accordion. And then our accordion JavaScript class. Bring this over. This is kind of where, again, I, you know, I'm not going to go in depth on um, accessibility, but a majority of what we're doing here besides toggling the open and close is setting some ARIA states um, to tell screen readers readers whether items are, are closed or open or hidden or shown. Um, so you can see area expanded here, area controls and area hidden. So all those, um, a lot of the, the accessibility considerations are applied in here. So we'll save that. Uh, oh, I forgot to bring this over. Again, this is where pulling in the accordion class and passing the class over here. Now, in order to pass this to the front end, uh, we need to add another entry here for script. Or no, it's view script starting. Yeah. Uh, and we can say file. Um, let's see. Let's make sure it's being built. Oh. Well, let's add it first. It'll be script.js. There's a question in the chat, which is applicable to this. Um, why is the open and close functionality in the accordion block container instead of the accordion item block? Or is there is uh, are we misunderstanding that? Um, let me see that question. Sorry, I have to read no it. No worries, it's in the chat. Why is the open close functionality in the accordion block container instead of on the accordion? Um, So yeah, so I, the JavaScript that we're using to toggle items open and close, I'm putting that on the accordion. Yeah, I'm organizing it within the accordion block, um, mostly because uh, you don't, you wouldn't really when you when you add an accordion block to the editor, there's always going to be a nested accordion item, so that affordance is already there. So really. Uh, there wouldn't be a case where you would have an accordion without any accordion items nested within it. So 
I mean, you certainly could, there's five, four different ways you could probably organize that code. But I think, I think this, you know, is pretty straightforward and makes sense to organize it alongside the accordion itself. Um, and plus the JavaScript for opening and closing, closing relies on the fact that the markup has that wrapper uh, parent accordion item um, affordance there. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, one other right. Oh, I just need to, let's see, I think I need to stop. And let's run this again, npm run start. So we can build up all our scripts again. And yep, there's the script.js. So that should be pulling in on the front end. Let's hop over here and refresh. Uh, hmm. It wants to, oh, okay, it styles. Let me see if this, any of this aria, nope. Something is failing there. Oh, I wonder if, uh, maybe it's script. I forget the difference between uh, view script and script keys. I thought view script was front end only. Well, actually, I wonder, we probably have to re register our script and then reference it. Um, sorry about that. We go back, yeah. Um, so if we go back into our plugin, we have to actually register the script for this block. Close that. Yeah, we'll use the um, so this is the the main plugin file here. Um, I'm just using WP register script to reference the uh, script.js here. And we're tying that to the init action, which runs super early. Um, so we can save that and then I think we can just reference it in an array now. This is like something new for WordPress 6.1 where you can pass in arrays for these items. Um, so we can say WP, uh, what did we call it? WP accordion.js. Oh, so the aria is firing, um, but it looks like oh, some of the stuff. Okay, yeah, and that's some of the styling of. Actually, the toggling isn't happening either. That's odd. So there, there's something lacking in the JavaScript of the accordion class uh, where it's not firing. It's partially firing because you can see the ARIA roles are being hooked up, but there's no toggling going on, obviously. Um, so I won't revisit that right now. Um, but I definitely will put the code um, on the GitHub repo. But that's essentially where piecing it all together. Um, you have the overall accordion parent, and then each accordion item is nested within. 
Um, there are some directions you could certainly take us to, to offer, you know, some options like um, right now we have a hard coded H3. Um, I might go back and make this optional in the editor. So you could say, um, maybe you want this to be an H2 or an H1. Um, that would be a, like a toolbar uh, component that you can pull in. Um, you might also want to have an option in the sidebar to say, I don't know, maybe the second item should be opened on load. So when you when the user visits the site, the first item would be closed, but the second would be open. Um, you could certainly add an option for that. So yeah, I was in uh, just some ideas to inspire if you want to, when I push this code up, if you want to take this and, and add any um, bells and whistles, those are definitely some things you could do. Oh, and I see I went over on time here. <laughs> awesome. Well, you got lots of uh, praise in the chat there and people looking forward to re reviewing the replay as well, Damon. Great. Thanks everybody for coming today. Oh, I'll post that um, up on the GitHub and also the I'll link the GitHub repo with the, the final video as well. And thanks, Sam. Thanks for all your help today. And enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. <laughs>